in a matter of you know minutes. That's an incredibly profound change. And so, I don't know, I, I kind of see the opportunity out. And I think the other thing is that software as a service also enables the scale of delivery of niche applications. I guess, sort of what you were saying there, but again, turn it around. If somebody spots, here's an opportunity to be able to provide some software into a particular market, we can now do it because we can scale to the entire globe immediately, as opposed to trying to sell it one into each country, which wouldn't have been a viable solution before. Therefore, you had bespoke applications all over the place. If you looked at what the, the thing I mentioned about the WISE group and what they've been able to do, and then just, oh, okay, we can actually now become a a consultancy to help people move to cloud. Uh, that is just going in all sorts of directions that it, it's fascinating to watch. I'll be very quick, conscious of time. This is something that from a Google perspective we're very, very proud of. Um, the SMB, the mid-market, the, I guess the, the higher enterprise, but also not-for-profits. The multi-tenancy for Google, because we started the business in the internet 10 to 12 years ago. The multi-tenancy for us is not an issue. The global footprint is not an issue. It's a global service that we add, we layer additional value and applications on every three days. So for us, we know the cost and we can also push that cost onto our customers in the most available way. So that's why the price point for Google Apps is, is considerably less than your current IT estate probably. Think about the Google business from an advertising perspective as well. We have millions and millions of users that use this multi-tenant global system, and we've been able to utilize that from an enterprise uh, point of view. We sign up 6,000 SMBs every single day on Google Apps, and that's across different geographies, countries, industries. We are very, very committed to the SMB space. And to answer this very specific question around kind of, you know, do we get penalized because we're an SMB? No. You get control as to exactly how you want that applied to your organization, which is very, very important to people. They don't want to feel that they're different from signing these kind of giant corporate EAs. They want the SMBs, we want the SMBs to be able to compete, which is exactly the same about Google.com and offering the advertising part of our business. You can compete with anybody. The same should be said about enterprise technology. It's a very good question, and especially since uh, I represent a, uh, I'd say, medium-sized uh, IT service provider in the UK. We turn around 50 million, so not quite the same size as uh, my esteemed colleagues on, on the right. And the question you ask is absolutely vital. Right? The backbone of the British economy, and we are trading solely in the UK, is SME. First, we need to define what is SME, because what we would define as a, uh, a medium-sized enterprise, these would probably define as, as a small customer understandably because of the size. Um, what we try to say to our customers is, look, we take up your issue with the vendors. We deal with Microsoft, we deal with IBM, we deal with BT, we deal with EMC, we'll deal with the HP, we deal with all the software vendors, because we take large-scale services of them, large-scale products of them. So therefore, we've got a lot more clout, clout actually with a T, um, to, in front of those vendors than you would have as an individual customer. And from our point of view, the service you take is exactly the same if you are a 50-user organization or a 2,000-user organization. You've got different scales of issues and requirements, but the requirements is exactly the same. From our point of view, you get exactly the same service, you get exactly the same SLA, and there is some flexibility in terms of how we can use the system, because we're trying to deliver solutions that gives you the flexibility to shape it to your requirements, without being saying, actually, you get box X, and that's all you get, which is exactly not where we, we need to be as a business. Some businesses can really only function economically on the cloud. So you spoke about charitable organizations. Um, one of Zeus's customers builds donations websites on behalf of the UN and DEC when there's a major, a major catastrophe. Um, for example, with the Louisiana hurricane, they built a site, they deployed it on Amazon EC2, and they were only able to scale the site up on demand because they were using an elastic cloud infrastructure like EC2. For services like that, you've got no idea before the event how much resource you will need. So the, in that case, the cloud is almost a necessity. 